So now we'll look at an assert method to check if an array contains a particular item. And um, the first method we'll look at is the include method. So let's say that um, we have an array here called haystack and we have this um, item here called needle that we're looking for. So we're looking for a needle in a haystack, I guess. This is a good example from the um, assert docs, by the way. So what we can do is we can call the include method on with chai.assert and the first argument we give it is the haystack or the array that we want to look in. The second argument is the needle or what we're looking for and then we have finally have an error message so if this fails it means needles not in the haystack. So if I put something like um, 4 here and I run this we can see that this fails because this array does not include 4. If I change it to something like 2 that the array does include um, and I run this again, we can see that it passes the test. So this method basically checks if this um, item here is inside this array. Now, another thing that this method, same method can do is if we have an object with the name of Bob um, and let's say age of 32, we can check if the, um, for example, we can check if Bob has an age of 32. So let's let's rename this to person. And let's rename this, to, uh, I don't know, like age. And what we can put here instead is we can say something like, it's kind of like um, a mongoose filter here. So we can say something like age 32 like this. And what this will do is it will look in this person object. I guess we, we should call this actually a query. So we can use the query in object. So we can give it the object here and then we can give it the query. And what this will do is, if we run this, it says all tests pass, which means it found this uh, um, key of age with the value of 32 inside it. And if I change this um, value to something else here and run this, we can see that it fails. Now the opposite method of this is the not include method. And the not include method basically, like I said, um, passes if it doesn't include it. So right now if because this um, age of 33 is not in this person object if i run this now we can see that this passes because it doesn't include it if i put it to something like 32 which is included in the person object we can see that it fails because it expected it not to have the property age of 32 as you can see here now if i change this back into an array so if i say haystack um equals one two three and we have once again needle oops that says nettle <laughs> needle and we have um two here and then we give it um haystack and needle remember the thing we're searching inside it always goes first and the thing we're searching for always goes second so if we run that now we can see that this fails because this array right here includes this two. But if I change this to something like three, and if I run this again, we can see, oh, hang on. Oops, that should be four. So if I change this to something like four, which is not in the array and I run it, we can see that the not include method passes because this array right here does not include this value. So let's look at the challenge now. And we're on challenge 12 now, and we have to give the include or not include method to make this pass. So in the first one, the array we're looking in is the winter months array. So that's this right here, which contains um, December, January, February, and March in their short form. And we're looking to see if July is in there. So the hint here says it's summer in July, so that should be a clue right there. But if we look in this array, we can see that July, the G, G, jewel entry is missing from this. So we know that it, this array doesn't include it. And if we give these to the include method, this will fail. So we need to give it to the not include method here. Um, what I'm just going to quickly do is I'm just going to um, send this off just to wake up the glitch project because they take a long time to wake up. I've noticed. So in the second one, we have this backend language array and it contains PHP, Python, JavaScript, Ruby, and ASP. And we want to check if this JavaScript entry is in there. And JavaScript is a backup language because we use it in Node and stuff like that. But also we can clearly see from looking at it that it's in this array. So because this backend languages array includes this JavaScript string, we know that if we give these to the include method, this will pass. So we can call include here. So if we save those now, that should be everything. So it's only two 
um, tests here and we go ahead and submit that. There we go. We can see that it's passed. So yeah, that's all you needed to do. So this one's pretty straightforward as well.